What's up guys, it's Will from The Game Lounge here, and today I want to do a video that's a little different, a little bit of a different vibe. Six months ago, I picked up the Retrobit Sega Saturn Pro controller, and I started doing a bit of an unboxing, uh, but kind of saw there were so many reviews out there, so many different unboxing videos, it wasn't really interesting. To be honest here, a lot of the reviews on this were very, very negative, and I'll get straight to the point here. If you are thinking about buying this primarily for the Saturn, as in real hardware, then it's simple. Don't. Retrobit have a fantastic standard wireless controller which you can pick up. Yes, this new one has an analog stick, but it's pretty small. And if you look here, it has a reasonably small range of motion. Also, it lacks analog triggers that work so well in games like Sega Touring Car, means that this isn't a replacement for the classic 3D controller. And whilst the lack of analog triggers mean that the Dreamcast doesn't have the full experience, if you are looking for a classic Sega retro controller with a number of great retro accessibility options, this is a fantastic addition to your hardware collection. And after six months of use, I wanna make a video to explain just how I've been using this and just how great it's been. So let's take a quick look here. You can see this isn't an unboxing, but you can see this has got all of the standard Saturn controls. It very, very much replicates a Saturn controller with the addition of these two sticks. Now, if you can see here, the range of motion on this analog stick is not great, and that does come through. And rather than having just the single trigger buttons, you have dual triggers, but frustratingly, not analog triggers. These are digital. It's also a fair amount fatter than your standard Sega Saturn controller. You can see here that there's a little bit more width in it, which actually I don't mind. But you can see here when placed side by side with a Saturn controller, this definitely is a pretty good match with all of the buttons and D-pad perfect. Uh, you've even got a home and a select button, which for me, I think is a good thing because you need this on PCs. You may have menus and overlays in emulators. So I like the additional buttons and additional connectivity here. So let's start with the first way that I've been using this. Uh, and that is for Saturn via emulation. Now having a wireless Saturn controller with low impact put lag because of the 2.4 gigahertz connection, uh, but the addition of an analog stick for certain games that support it offers a really, really authentic experience. But with the addition of an analog stick, which makes certain games like Quake feel so much more responsive. Not only that, the mini sticks means you can play games like Virtual On, which needed an expensive controller, um, with ease. And the additional buttons that come with this uh, controller can be mapped. So if you want to set up buttons for certain button combinations or for save state functionality, however you want to do things, I found this to be really, really good. And I've really thoroughly enjoyed playing the Saturn. I, I personally play a lot of my games via emulation. I think um, obviously real hardware is ideal, but it's not necessarily always particularly efficient. It takes up a lot of space to have different consoles. So to consolidate it down and just have this is fantastic. But not just that, this is a fantastic Sega controller. Now it's modeled after, in my opinion, one of the best 2D game controllers of all time. And that obviously has a knock on impact here. Why? Because this is a great Mega Drive six button controller. So classic 16 bit fighting games work absolutely beautifully. And I'm going to go back to the fantastic D-pad here. Um, the Mega Drive and Master System with this D-pad feel really, really authentic. And it doesn't stop there, obviously, with systems like the Sega or Mega CD, depending on your location. And of course, the 32X. And this controller just feels right with all of those systems. But let me be very clear here, it doesn't just stop at Sega systems. I actually thoroughly enjoy playing PlayStation games with this device. If you are a classic Sega fan who wants to map the Saturn pad 
to have the classic Tomb Raider controls in Tomb Raider 2 and pretend that the sequel was never cancelled, well, guess what? You can do it with this and play with that authentic Sega experience. Same with Resident Evil 2, you can absolutely do this. And even traditional PS2, sorry, PlayStation games that use the analog stick, the layout is very similar to the PS controller with the DualShock. And despite that lack of movement range that I've spoken about, the games control surprisingly well. Obviously, this isn't my favorite way to play original PlayStation games. That would, of course, be the DualShock 4, my personal favorite way to play classic PS and PS2 games. But for many games which didn't have analog support in particular, this Saturn controller is fantastic. And don't just stop with Sony. As you can see here, all of the games that I'm playing in this video, I am playing with this controller. And the N64, where again, the whole sensor analog stick feels surprisingly good, even just navigating Mario around is fantastic. But the biggest seller here is the fact that this has six face buttons, which mirrors the N64 controller face. So most retro gaming systems, and a lot of people will just use your standard Xbox or PlayStation controller. And having to reassign keys per game to make sense, or simply using the right stick as the C buttons, which can work when they're mapped to camera functions. But that's not an issue here because I have all of the face buttons that I need to perfectly play games like International Superstar Soccer. So threading those through balls with the C up button playing classic ISS and it having it feel like a proper button click or similarly with Zelda here, you can see a button click to fire the catapult. It feels excellent. And actually the hand grip, the hand placement also feels really good with this one. Uh, my favorite option with the N64 is actually another retro bit offering. But like I said, if you're looking for a classic Sega controller, uh, but that has so much other things going for it, a one controller fits all, this is great. And I know I've talked in a lot of depth about the D-pad, but I can't stress enough how good it is. And that's made even more evident in classic MAME games. You can see here in Metal Slug, I'm pulling off diagonals so easily, I don't miss a beat. And I really, really have enjoyed playing classic MAME games where maybe you don't want to use a joystick uh, and just want a classic pad to play this. And it's extremely good. I've also been playing games like Golden Axe Revenge of the Death Adder, and it just feels a perfect fit for these classic MAME arcade games. And there were so many fantastic Sega games that released in the arcades, but never made it to console. And this almost feels like playing on that these games really made it to Saturn. Golden Axe Revenge of the Death Adder. You can now play with a classic Saturn controller that feels excellent. There are other options, of course. The 8 bit Do has a fantastic gamepad that looks very authentic, but this is genuinely a Sega versus Nintendo choice again. On the one hand, you have this retro bit controller with six face buttons and a big brash D-pad, or you can go with the more traditional SNES D-pad. Um, but I actually played some classic Mario even with this, uh, playing the SNES Super Mario All-Stars. And again, with this D-pad, it just feels surprisingly right for classic games. But there's another great use for this chameleon of a controller. Uh, like I say, I you can also hook this in to the Switch. And again, I'm playing Sonic Mania here and it feels like I'm playing it on a classic Sega system. This feels better than using the D-pad with the Nintendo uh, official controller. It feels really, really good. And that extends right through to many systems. Now the system that doesn't really work 
is the Dreamcast. And it does make me think uh, this is almost perfect, this controller. If the, those analog sticks were slightly larger and had slightly more range of motion, and of course, if those trigger buttons were analog triggers, then this would not only be the perfect Sega controller, but the perfect Sega Dreamcast controller. And sadly, this one is a miss. It's pretty good, but when you play games like MSR, like I'm playing here, it is just a standard button digital trigger, and it doesn't have the same feel as when you play with, say, your original Dreamcast controller or a 360 controller, which obviously has a similar feel. So that's a real shame. However, like I say, it's not just Switch. PSP with this is brilliant because that little PSP nub, this is a perfectly feeling better premium version of that when you play these games. Or even the PS2, if you want to play classic 2D fighting games on your PlayStation 2, this works really, really well. So I guess the message here, like I say, video is a little bit different this week, but the message is do not discount this one. If you're looking for a Saturn controller, no, this isn't for you. But if you're looking for a classic retro emulation controller, this personally has been the controller I have used aside from my standard Xbox uh, One controller the most in the last six months, which is why I wanted to make this video. Anyway, what controllers do you prefer? Let me know in the comments if there's something that I've missed here or if there's something that I should consider because I definitely want to hear it. I love speaking to the community here. As always, like and subscribe. I'll see you next week for another video. Have a great day.